Hi everyone, it's Mandy from Designs with Miss Mandy, and today I'm excited to show you how to make print then cut files. This is something I'm really excited about because I looked on the internet forever when I was trying to figure out how to do this and was hard pressed to find anything useful, especially for making print then cut files from scratch. So now that I've figured out how to make them, I'm really excited to share my knowledge with you. So. Uh, if you haven't watched my previous video on how to make your own SVG cut files, I strongly recommend that you watch it, especially if you're not familiar with making compound paths. Uh, so after you've watched that, then let's just dive right in. And I'm going to skip the first few steps and just show you something I've already previously designed. So what I have here is this little template for a box that looks like a retro cassette. Pretty cute. Um, and I've separated things into a group of compound paths and then a background compound path. The reason I did this was for my own sake to be able to organize things so I could see this group which I want to print in the end and this path that I want to cut at the end. So within this group I actually have five colors believe it or not and so that's one thing that you're gonna wanna do is um, make sure that each color is its own compound path. So I have this top one is the darkest color, and then uh, the next one is this white, and so on and so forth. Every different color gets its own compound path. And so that's something that took me a second to figure out, but once you have those, you're good to go. Um, and then the background path is going to be my cut path. And I'll move it off the artboard here really quick just so you can see it a little bit better. And uh, you're going to want to make this white, I found, is the easiest thing to do. Um, yes, that's going to be what you want to do. I used to make it black, but it creates problems with the bleed later, so white is your best bet. Um, so once you have that, and you can see I want these parts to be cut out, and so that's why I've made sure to subtract them from the overall shape. And there you go. Okay, and then the last thing I want to tell you before we dive into the Cricut Design Space is that there that you can't make um, you can't do print and cut files or shapes that are bigger than about five and a quarter inches wide. I haven't figured out exactly the magic number for the height, but five and a quarter inches wide is your maximum for width. So it's different from regular cut files where you can go almost to the edge of the page and be fine. These ones you can't go you can't go all the way to the edge because they have registration marks for lack of a better term that the Cricut's going to need to use later. Um, that probably doesn't make sense right now but I'll show you later what I'm talking about. Okay so when you save this I'm just going to get rid of these extra doodads off my artboard you're going to go to File, Save As, and then just make sure the format is SVG. Okay, and so now what we're going to do is launch Design Space. I'm just going to make a new project. You're just going to go over here to upload images. Browse. And then locate the file that we just created. And hit save. Select that file and now it'll appear on your canvas. So here is a crucial step in your print and cut file journey. Uh, <laughs> right now we have all the layers selected and that's good, that's what you want. Um, they don't look like they're all in a group but the Cricut Design Space says they are and so what we're going to do is click this button right here called ungroup. Really important and then it'll separate them all. 
Now you can select them all by clicking and holding shift. But don't click on the very back one, the one we want to cut. Now that you have all the files or the layers that you want to be printed, selected, you click this button up here called flatten. And when you do that, it should automatically make this layer into a print layer. If it doesn't for some reason, you can just go in here to layer attributes and click print. And your background layer is still a cut layer exactly how you want it. So there you go. Don't forget those steps. Ungroup and then hold shift to select them all and then uh, flatten. Once you have that, you're ready to go. So these are the little registration marks I was talking about. When you go to print your file, these are going to automatically print on your page. This is how the Cricut machine reads it. This is how it tells where exactly the page is and makes an accurate cut. So the last thing I wanted to mention is under here where it says more matte settings. If you click, it automatically adds a bleed to your print file. Um, it's kind of hard to tell, but if I deselect it, you can definitely tell what I'm talking about. So it basically adds a little bit of extra color around your cutting edges. Uh, this is good for most all projects. I like it because if the Cricut's off just a little bit, then it um, gives it a little bit more leeway. But if for some reason it doesn't work for your project, you can deselect it and it won't make any of your edges fuzzy or anything. So. Um, and there you go. So that's all you really need to know. Um, it takes a little bit of practice and there's a lot of little tedious steps in between. But um, I hope that you're able to learn a lot from this video and you're ready to go. Go conquer the print and cut world. Booyah!